Welcome to the Career Meets World podcast, Shivani. It is so good to have you on today. I really, really appreciate you jumping on. We have a lot to cover today, but first of all, how are you? I'm good. Well, first of all, thank you for having me here. I'm super excited. I've loved your episodes and I'm excited. I'm honored to be a guest today. I'm doing well. It's sunny outside. I think things are looking up. So I'm, yeah, I'm excited for our conversation. Yeah, you've been a globetrotter lately, jumping around from San Francisco, Berlin to Chicago. So quite impressed with how you live your life now during COVID. And for a lot of our listeners, they might be exposed to your work for the first time. And I want to make sure that they truly understand who you are. So can you give us a quick background of kind of your experience? And then we'll dive into more specific things. Yeah, sure. So I am the founder and CEO of Ascend. We offer an online leadership program for women. What inspired me to start Ascend was I used to be in our member's shoes. So I owned and led different business and product initiatives at large companies like PayPal and high growth startups. As I was moving into management, I learned how to get buy-in, motivate my teams, advocate for myself by honestly just making a ton of mistakes. Some guidance were primarily a lot of mistakes. I remember when one time I was working with a designer on a project together and we had things just weren't going well. She wasn't fulfilling her set of responsibilities. That was pretty obvious. And so I went to give her some feedback around it. And, you know, while I had good intentions, it totally blew up in my face. I just, I hadn't thought about how she might receive it. She felt really attacked. It turned into a bigger deal than it ever actually needed to be. And I learned so much from my experience, really just putting my ego in check, understanding the power of empathy, really thinking about like, how's this thing going to make that person feel? And, you know, situations like that is around when I learned how to navigate these kind of situations, when I learned how do you rally stakeholders, those are actually the moments that have helped me feel so much more confident, be able to move it faster in my career and impact not only my teams, but also our executives and our company's board of directors. And so these experiences combined with the time I spent studying at Harvard Business School to get my MBA inspired me to start Ascend. I want to elevate more women into leadership. I believe that's a big way that we see the change that we need to see in today's workplaces. But I realized that we currently learn to lead and influence through trial and error. We all know that we should get people invested in our ideas, that we should speak up, push back, but we don't do it either because we don't have the time, we don't know where how to get started, or we're scared because practicing these skills at work is high stakes. If you make a mistake, it can hurt your reputation or worse. That's why I started Ascend to create a safe space for high caliber women to be able to develop these practical skills to lead and influence through um, in a way that is very practical and they can actually develop habits around it and learn with a community of other women who are going through the same challenges as them. What you're building is pretty inspiring. And as a personal ally to women, I've done this throughout my career. There's a lot for all of us to learn. And I know personally, one of the main reasons I wanted to have you on today is to share your journey, your story, and why you've built what you've built. But I also find it incredibly important to demystify a lot of the things that happen in the workplace, right? You're focused on empowering women. But I also want to make sure that we shed a light on a lot of things that happen in the workplace that might go unknown or unseen. So I'm curious if you could share maybe a personal experience that truly inspired you to go down the route with the send in your early days, whether it was at PayPal or other companies, what did you actually experience being a female and making sure that you can see what others are going through so that you can empower people today? Yeah, I remember... It's a, one experience that really sticks out to me is when I became a manager. So I had been wanting to be a people manager that had been a career goal for me for a long time. And when I finally got promoted, I was had so much self-doubt in my mind that I didn't ask for a raise to go along with it. I was worried that if they had to pay me more money, they would reconsider the promotion, maybe even demote me. And a couple of months later, you know, as I was going through the role, I realized that I actually knew what I was doing. Yes, I was making a ton of mistakes, but like I was exactly where I needed to be. And I realized that everyone is new to people management in the beginning. It seems really obvious to me now, but it didn't in the moment. I was so caught up in my own head. So then I got the nerve to go and ask for that raise. I was really nervous. The, my manager came back to me and said like, yes, 
you got it. I was excited, but also really disappointed in myself mm. around like not asking earlier. And as I've shared that experience with people, it, you know, I just see it more and more happen. Moving into people management is a big step. And really anytime you take on a new opportunity and, you know, studies are showing uh, women on average tend to hold themselves back more. For example, there's a study where men will apply for a role if they fit 60% of the qualifications, but women on average will apply if they meet 100% of the qualifications. And I've seen those play out in real life too. And that's really what inspired me to start Ascend because like, there's got to be a better way for us to learn these skills and like move up in our career faster and to be able to have that safe space to build the confidence. So it was a big part of Ascend today, the empowerment piece. What exactly are you focused on when you're working with women today? Yeah, so it's, you know, it's, it's uh, the empowerment piece comes from developing the skills. So it comes from understanding how to influence stakeholders. How do you empower your teams? How do you advocate for yourselves? When you have these cheat sheets and frameworks and tools in your back pocket to navigate tough situations, what do you do when someone is not taking your idea seriously? How do you navigate that situation? So when you know how to navigate those situations, you feel more confident in the moment. And also what I found is when you see that a bunch of other high caliber, really qualified women face the same challenges as you do, that is empowering in itself. And so the, the leadership program, it's a six-week program, and every week you go through a new module. And a lot of it is based on community-based learning and then applying the learnings to your work. That's you learn by doing. And I'd say it's a mix of those two things. It's that community, and it's high caliber, but low ego. Everyone's very open and eager to share and help each other. And also having these tools, and then you go apply these tools at work, week one, and you're like, whoa, I just got a meeting went so much smoother than it ever had been. And you realize like, oh, I actually know how to do this. And now I have a framework to help guide me along the way. And that's so important to have that community to support you. I want to get back to the community in a second, but let's flip this upside down because a lot of our listeners are either in the workspace and they could be male leaders, they could be female leaders, but they also could be small business owners or people who are in the entrepreneurial landscape looking to hire somebody. What do you think some of those gaps are on the hiring side, particularly for males when they look at women or think about women? Just from your experience, what would you share or encourage them to do differently? Yeah. So I often hear that, oh, we don't have diversity because it's a pipeline issue. There's not enough candidates out there. And to that, I would push back and actually ask, like, are you actually correctly going to the communities where you find the candidates who, what, like, whoever the underrepresented minority that you're seeking out um, is. So, you know, when things happen in the news and people will post on Instagram, some, some post in support, but then it often just stops there. And then people are like, oh, I don't really know what else I can do. But actually in the workplace, especially as a hiring manager, you have so much power and influence around it. The way that we drive real change is you start small, you start within your company, you start within your team, you create that diversity, you set them up for success, and that will have a trickle down effect and also trickle up. Like you'll, as we promote more women into leadership, as we promote more minorities into leadership, that is how you create these diverse, inclusive environments. So I would say one, make sure that your pipelines are truly diverse. If you're not getting that diversity that you're seeking, then question your processes rather than just blaming it on, oh, well, there's not enough candidates out there. And, you know, like, for example, in Ascend, 20% of each cohort is Black and Latinx women. And that does not happen naturally. I give out scholarships. Uh, we go into communities of women of color to help create that. And so I know it's not the easiest thing, but it, it not being easy is not an answer in itself. If we can be more proactive around it. I would also say is around to create a more inclusive workspace. So let's say, you know, something that's gender agnostic is introverts. So let's say you are having a team meeting. Some people, especially introverts, aren't comfortable brainstorming on the spot. So in, in addition to having that team meeting, share a Google Doc in advance and be like, this is what we're gonna brainstorm. Anyone can dump ideas in here. So now you're giving people two options to engage. They can take their time, think through their ideas and come to the meeting feeling much more comfortable and sharing and be able to show up in their best way. And you're also catering to other people who are 
comfortable thinking on the spot. And so simple changes like that can help create a more inclusive environment and can help drive real change. So I think that's really important to process and digest because ultimately what you're saying is, and I agree with you that we can put up fancy billboards or marketing campaigns, but at the end of the day, we have to walk the talk and actually proactively go out there and seek out the right candidates. And the reality is something else that I've heard is oftentimes if we think about how many women are raised in our society or what women, what our society encourages women to do at an early age, we kind of push them into a direction where they're forced to think a certain way or STEM isn't a big part of their life or negotiation isn't for women, it's more so for men. And these habitual thoughts are kind of programmed into women's minds early on in their career, making it even more harder for them to actually go out and negotiate. And it's not a core part of their thinking early on. And a big piece that I want to make sure that we do is, again, demystify that and make sure that they do feel empowered, whether it's through your program or just through hearing this conversation. I know a big piece outside of just the negotiation piece is understanding and valuing your own pedigree and your own experience, right? I think you're very fortunate to have incredible companies on your resume. You got into Harvard Business School, but plenty of people listening maybe don't have that experience. So what's your recommendation for people to truly, again, feel empowered and feel courageous, whether or not they have those incredible companies on their resumes or the universities themselves? Yeah, definitely. I, you know, on the first part, I would say first thing is just surrounding yourself with a community of people who believe in you and support you. So right out of college, I went into investment banking. I was one of two women on the floor and that that like often would make me doubt myself whether I belonged or not. And, but knowing that there was a people, my family, some of my colleagues uh, really believed in me and, you know, I was able to show up and really and excel help, help me so much. So I'd say first is like recognizing or and surrounding yourself with people who believe in you. It's, even as a founder today, I, what really has given me the confidence to keep going, um, initially starting out was, my family, ex-colleagues. And then now it's our members who are like, I love what you're doing. How can I support? And just going above and beyond. So I, I'd say first create that community. Two, we are shifting into a world where logos, especially educational degrees, is going to matter less, especially if you are operating in tech. And so I, you know, yes, I learned a lot at Harvard and I built this amazing network from there. I've also, I, I'd say I learned so much more on the job. And so I would really think about for someone who maybe doesn't have the opportunity or a desire to go to Harvard or Stanford or wherever else is really thinking about where do you want to grow in your career? What are your gaps and how are you going to fill them? And often we can fill it through, through hustling, like building up, you know, your social, like your public profile, asking for internships. I remember I, you know, in business school, I did an internship at the startup. I worked at Intercom and they hadn't, they didn't, they were just, they were pretty early stage. So they didn't have a formal internship process. So I literally just spent, created a deck for them, um, a short pitch of like, here's a problem that I believe you have. And here's how I think I can help you solve it. And I just sent it to them. I didn't know if it would go anywhere. They saw it, they, they loved it. I came to work with them. I came back full-time afterwards. But I share that story just because that's something that anybody can do. You can do your own research, create that. And it really, it's not about actually even getting the right answer, but it's showing about how can you think strategically, showing that you have hustle, that you have grit, and you are committed to helping them be successful. And so I think that's a pathway that, especially as I saying, like, I think educational degrees, how they stand today are going to change, are not going to be valued as much. And so it's more going to be around, like, how can you get the experiences on the ground that will help you be like that will help you be successful on your own, but also help you create success for others and at companies. Yeah, we certainly have atypical pathways now that don't necessarily have to mirror a lot of the things that you and I were taught at an early age, which is education and college and universities and master's degrees are the best pathway. 
there's still an option, but the world's evolving and there's so much access to online education. There's access to programs like yourself where you can learn a lot of these important skills without having to get this expensive degree. But yeah, this, um, I would say like the leadership, a sense leadership program is the leadership training I wish I had. It's, you know, I have learned so much on the job. And then I was like, I think other people should learn these skills faster. And, and, and a lot of the topics we talk about are gender agnostic. Everyone needs to learn how to lead, how to influence. And so I set out to create the program that I wish I had when I was moving into management. So I agree with you where now there are different opportunities, whether it's through public speaking or coding or leadership skills, that you don't have to go to a two-year program to gain it. Absolutely. And arguably, that's the best way to build any sort of program or product is if you would actually go into this program yourself and utilize it, that's how you know you built a solution that actually impacts people's lives. And I commend you for doing that. I know you had just mentioned that mentorship or having the right people really see your work, whether it's through personal branding, is hyper important. Who are some of the people in your life that really had a tremendous impact in who you became today and how you were able to be successful throughout your career? So a big one that pops into mind is two of my managers, one that I had at Credit Suisse when I was in investment banking and one I had at PayPal. And really it's, so even now as I think about what a good manager looks like, I still think about them. And I, what really has differentiated them is they, they care so much about my success that what my wins felt like their wins. So I remember when I got into HBS for business school, they were so excited, <laughs> even though, you know, it felt like they'd gotten into business school. And, and that is what has really helped me understand like what a good mentor looks like, what a good manager. I remember in at work when I would make mistakes, they were incredibly patient with me. And, you know, in investment banking, you are working long, long hours. And Vivek, one of my managers then, he would like stay back and just help, like help me learn a new skill or coach me through how I made that mistake. And the same thing happened with Jeremy at PayPal. And so I think those were two really good role models for me. And then I'd say, you know, especially as a woman in the workplace, I often think about, well, how am I going to think about having kids and, and managing that with work? And, you know, I have ambitious career goals and just seeing so many women out there of how they have managed it. And what I'm really grateful for, for people is being, uh, people being comfortable talking about their stories and talking about their struggles and being honest about it and just killing it, crushing in their career. And also, you know, being able to figure out what feels right to them in that balance, or I'd say it's not even a balance, but figuring out what, what is success looks like for them instead of trying to stick to a predefined notion of what success looks like. So you've clearly had incredible leadership and two solid mentors in your life. For people listening today, what would be your recommendation to go through an interview process and seek out companies and really test the waters. Is this a good leader? How do you prompt the right questions based on your experience? So one, I would just pay attention to the dynamics, like who is interviewing you? What kind of rapport do they have? Like often people will tag team in an interview. So what kind of rapport do they have? I would talk to, if you're talking, if you're interviewing with a hiring manager, I would ask to talk to someone on their team and ask them questions around their day-to-day, -day, how much autonomy do they have? What's their relationship with their manager look like? People aren't gonna tell you like, if there's a problem, people probably aren't gonna tell you that there's a problem, but you can at least read between the lines. You can pick up on their tone around it. And also seeing how long are people staying at companies? How long has, what, how did their manager or their company react when COVID hit? What was their priorities? I think those are all really good indicators that you can um, seek out on your own. You just have to be more proactive about doing that. Absolutely. To add on to that, one of the best pieces of advice that I ever received was actually go back and seek out people who have left the company and try yeah. to reach out to them and see why they left the company and really learn what was the culture like. That's the most authentic answer you can ever get. So you often talk about leadership and specifically for women, but I know we're in a gender agnostic conversation right now. And I want you to kind of expand on what you really see as a differentiator between leadership and management. Because I think oftentimes people get promoted into management because they've done an incredible job in an IC role, 
but they're not natural born leaders. What are some of the traits that you see in people who are truly leaders? So that, that's a great call out though, uh, leadership and management. I would say you lead people and you manage tasks. So uh, around that, you know, leadership is around how do you rally people together? How do you inspire and motivate them? Management is moving things forward. So how do you figure out like, here's what we need to get done. Let's go get it done. And like you said, when we, it's interesting that you get promoted from, you get promoted because you're a individual, good individual contributor to manager, even though the skill sets are so different. As an IC individual contributor, you are focused on execution. So having those technical skills, how good of a coder are you? How good are you at building products or closing sales or launching campaigns versus, you know, as a leader, it's about how good are you at empowering your team, but also blocking and tackling I remember when I moved over to management, I used to think it was so glamorous from the outside. And when you actually become a manager, you're just like, whoa, this is actually really messy. I have to, you know, a good manager or a good leader is not going to just tell their team what to do. You actually have to try to get them bought into the direction. You have to get them, uh, you have to include their opinion on how, what goals should we go after? How do we approach it? And then you have to block and tackle and get resources from everybody else, cross-functional partners, senior leaders, get them aligned on how your team is going. So on that leadership piece, it's really around how can you get people aligned on the problem that you're trying to solve around what are the goals for your team and then have them be motivated enough. They're like, yes, this is a problem I want to go solve and I want to dedicate my time to it. Because when you do that, then they are excited to come to work. They're excited to solve the problems that when issues come up, as they often do on problem, on projects, they are 110% into it. So, you know, I've also had my share of bad managers. And I think those are the people who were just focused on like getting things done, not getting our buy-in. They make us feel like we're not good enough. They don't seem to care about our growth versus a good leader is someone who takes that time to invest in us who is focused, whose willingness to give us new growth opportunities to even when we make mistakes and is willing to coach us through it. I think that is a key difference. And people often don't recognize that there is a difference between good managers and good leaders. They just, and it's important to start having these kind of conversations. So I love that you brought that up. Absolutely. And there's this underrated level of patience, I think, with leadership compared to management, who's responsible for delivering on a goal, but leaders know how to inspire their team. So I like the distinguishment that you just made. And I know for you, while you're building this company, Ascend, you're also in a leadership position where you're kind of figuring out how to scale and grow and get more people into these cohorts that you run. I know a lot of our listeners are always itching to start their own thing or start some sort of side hustle or business. What has your experience been like post HBS to really get a send off the ground? So post HBS, I, you know, I'm a huge planner. So when I graduated from undergrad, I was like, okay, I'm going to go into investment banking, then maybe go do something else, then go to business school and then keep growing within a company. I never thought even when I graduated from HBS that I would go start my own company. It naturally came when I reflected on my time and my career, when I realized I had learned all these skills around leadership by making a ton of mistakes. And I'm like, hmm, other people should just learn this faster. And also I care a lot about empowering women. That's a topic that's really important to me. I was coaching on the side. I was like, oh, I actually want to go do this full time. So I quit my job in tech to start Ascend. So my first takeaway there would be there is no set path. So be willing to lean in when things feel right. If you'd asked me even three years ago, if I was going to start my own company, I would have told you, no, everybody around me would have told you like, no way, she's not going to be a founder. Even though I grew up in Silicon Valley, like that was just, that could be natural, but I was like, no, but now this, I love this. This is like, I'm, this is where this is me now. And I, and so being open to where changes happen Two, I'd say, just get started. In the beginning, you're not going to see traction. You're going to make mistakes. I remember, you know, even something like when I started sharing about Ascend, my um, my first pitch was like fifty dollars. I um, created a PDF. I colored it pink just to make it look like slightly more appealing, and and I just put it out there, and I got some responses. And 
and and it's hard to get like so caught up in your own head because then or all around you there's all these people who are like posting online and being like oh I just raised this much money or I just did x and like I'm so far behind but just getting started and realizing that people share all their successes but behind every success there is many many failures and so I say, just get started, just keep going, just do it. I remember when I started, uh, and it's end, I do a weekly newsletter. When I started that, I was like, I don't really know how to write. And this whole weekly commitment feels like a lot. Well, people want to hear what I've, what I write about. And it's just like, keep it going. Now I'm just like one week after one week, I went after one after one week. And so yeah, just get started. You're gonna make mistakes, but recognize that the best way to learn is by doing. I thought for so many months around like what a send would look like and what should the leadership program cover. And it was only through testing and feedback and iteration that it is what it is now. I could never have thought about it on my own. I can empathize a lot with that because as a planner, I too never thought that I would step out of the corporate workspace and go pursue something. And I think that's an important thing to realize for a lot of people is that there's no right age. There's no right time for you to figure this out. You'll get inspired by something and go try it. Worst case, you'll go back to a corporate environment and continue to get a paycheck. So trying is the best thing. And the best thing that can happen is you start a full-fledged business. And I know that's what happened for you. And I'm curious to learn more so what's next for us and what are you building now? What the vision is going forward? So in a end, we want to be the professional development platform to empower women to excel as leaders. And so that will over time be, a, you know, multiple courses. And this community is incredibly rich. It's that it's, they're just amazing. It's high caliber, but low ego. Everyone's so excited to help each other. So really helping, providing a really safe space, but also very practical tools to help navigate all these situations at work that we don't currently talk about. And so continuing to build on that is really exciting for me. So what's the best way for people to find out about the program? Uh, check out weascend.co. We are program starts at the end of June. So, and I'm really excited how the cohort shaping up. We have women from Amazon and Google and Slack and a bunch of other companies. So if you're interested, you can apply at weascend.co or you can follow me on Twitter. I also share a lot of leadership advice there. Awesome, Shivani. So look, before we let all of our guests off the hook, we always want to make sure we put them through the hot seat and challenge you with some fun questions. So I got to ask you, are you ready? Yes, let's do it. All right. So look, if you had to do this all over again, meaning you're 18 years old, you're going into college, what would you study now? Hmm. I think it would be two, two things. One, I'd do computer science and learn how to code. But with the way the world is shifting now, I think if you can, that that's going to become a critical skill that everyone sh just needs to know. And then the second thing is psychology, is understanding how people think and operate. Uh, if I had thought about all that in advance, and I, I wouldn't have made the same mistakes or a lot of the same mistakes. I did around, you know, I shared in the beginning, I shared an example of when I gave someone digital feedback and I just focused on how it was making me feel. If I just thought about the psychology and thought about like how to approach it, that would have been so much better. So I'd say those two things, computer science and psychology. Probably the most important skills right now. Question number two for you. If you were to have your last meal with three people, you can invite literally anyone. Who would they be and where would you go? So I would say I, one is Whitney Wilford from Bumble. I think she's just an incredible founder. I love her story and, you know, her company just went public and just getting to learn from someone who has just accomplished so much. And just, I think, yes. So I would definitely her, I am a big foodie. So I would love to just be at the table with like, like a great food expert. I love just trying new cuisines and traveling and just like eating at the hole in the walls. And then the third one I would say would be Indra Nui. So she is um, the former CEO of, Pe of Pepsi. Just, uh, I think especially as a South Asian, um, as another 
in the end. Um, and just, you know, she has broken so many barriers as a woman, as a successful CEO, standalone CEO. And so just getting to learn from them would be incredibly inspiring. It's awesome. So one final question for you. I know that as an avid learner, you probably read a lot of books. So if you had to read one book for the rest of time, what would that book be? How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. That right. completely shifted how I think about things. Um, and and it's, just, it's interesting because even just something that, that seems simple, like listening is so powerful. And I realized that I'm actually not a great listener. I so often when someone asks me, when I ask someone a question, I will already start thinking about how I'm going to respond even before they finish talking. And so that was a, just a really great book that I can read over and over again. Yeah, my assumption is that 90% of people just want to respond with the next answer and not necessarily even acknowledge what that person is saying. So powerful book will change your life, I guarantee it. Uh, I want to make sure that people connect with you, learn more about the Ascend program. I know you're launching it at the end of June. So make sure to check out We Ascend or follow Shivani on Twitter, LinkedIn. She is an incredible human being who's here to inspire so many women. Thank you so much for spending some time today on the Career Meets World podcast. And as we always say here, go unleash your wildest potential. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. This was great.